how to set fitness goals and then actually achieve them. Coming up. What is going on my friends, this is Jake of www.jgcarsnacks.co.uk and before I dive into it, I just want to mention that for the best guidance for, you know, actually setting fitness goals with your car snacks journey and actually achieving them, right? Make sure you subscribe to the channel now and turn on post ding, notifications ding, ding. because I upload new videos every Monday and Thursday specifically for people like you, my friend. Right, so what we're going to do here for you, my friend, to get the most value from this video, I want you to grab a pen and paper, right? Don't get like your notes or try and type it, right? Pen and paper is where you're gonna get the most value because that's where when we write things down, when we write our goals down on pen and paper, we're far more likely to achieve them, right? Fun fact for the day if you didn't know that, right? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna guide you through this video and then you can pause the video whenever you wanna have more time to actually write your answers down, do you know what I mean? So what we're gonna do is the key to achieving your health and fitness goals, especially this year as we start 2020, right? Happy New Year, my friend, by the way, especially if you're watching this around the start of January, right? Is we want to focus on the SMART principle. So I'm sure, you know, you've, whether it's been in school, you've learned in business, right? Obviously, SMART meaning, of course, um, SMART goals. So obviously, that is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound, right? There's, you know, a few different things, like some people say it's self attainable, achievable, self relevant, realistic, right? We're sticking to this one, right? This is the one I've been taught. <laughs> so right now we're gonna go over each one individually with some focus. So the first one is specific, right? Because ultimately, right, if we have vague goals, we're gonna get vague results, you know what I mean? So don't say, okay, I wanna lose some weight, or I wanna build some muscle. It needs to be specific, right? How much weight do you want to lose? How much weight do you want to gain, right? Whether it's, you know, instead of I want to lose weight, I'm gonna lose 10 pounds of fat, right? And then instead of, oh, I just wanna gain some muscle, I'm gonna build 10 pounds of lean muscle. You know what I mean? 80% of new gym members quit by the time of February when they start out for the new year in January, right? Why? Because they didn't achieve the results they want. They didn't see, you know, the results they desired. But the problem is, they don't even know what they wanted in the first place, right? But if you set these specific goals, you're gonna be very clear on what you want. And that's where we can move on to the second step very swiftly, the M, which is measurable, right? So in measurable, we got two different types of ways we can measure our you know, fitness goals to see if we're actually achieving them, right? Because what gets measured gets managed. The first type of form of tracking, right, is a quantitative factors or quantitative factors. So this is more objective based. It's very black and white. It's either you have it, you've either achieved it or you haven't, you know what I mean? When it comes to weight loss and fat loss, obviously a very easy quantitative factor is the weighing scale, right? You know what I mean? Or whether it's weight loss or if you wanted to see you know, um, how much muscle you've built around your chest, your arms, etc. You could use a measuring, right? Um, a tape measure, right? Or you can even use body fat scans, right? To see how your body has changed over, you know, the weeks or months you've been dedicated to your fitness goals. So that way you can actually objectively actually measure how you get on and whether you've achieved it or not, you know what I mean? And then on the other side, qualitative factors, more subjective basis, more in a shade of gray rather than black and white, right? We can't really measure it so much, but it's a way of, we can still actually see if we've achieved it or not, right? So this is more based on feelings, right? So um, a good example of this is progress pictures, right? How do you feel with the progress you've made? Have you seen that you can see pictures or not? could be somewhat quantitative based, but you know, we're just gonna keep it as qualitative, right? Um, another example is your energy. Do you have more energy? If you have more energy, you have more mood. Um, when you wake up every day and you feel more energetic to crush it at work, and that means that you're heading in the right direction from first setting out of your fitness goals, you know what I mean? This is very important because ultimately, with our fitness goals, weight loss, muscle gain, right? We cannot control what we don't track, right? Again, what gets measured gets managed. Write it on your forehead, write it somewhere along your wall in your in your um, room or in your office at work, whatever, right? Because this is very important. You still follow me so far? Now the A of the smart is attainable, right? Because really, like, you gotta find that sweet spot because really, you know, the problem with most people's goals is not that they aim too high and then fall shorter, but it's that people actually aim far too low and they actually become satisfied with achieving that, right? You know, whether you're watching this video and you wanna lose some weight, I'm sure you'd be much happier, right, if you had, let's say, 20 pounds of excess fat you wanted to lose, to actually like set that goal to lose 20 pounds of fat rather than, uh, I'll be happy with five pounds of fat, you know what I'm saying? So you gotta see that sweet spot, right? Because if we, we, if we actually go too low, then of course, 
you know, we know we can achieve it, so we're not really gonna take much action. But if we say something that's and really just unrealistic, like, you know, losing 10 pounds in a day, right? You know what I mean? Or 100 pounds in a month, right? Then it's so far out of reach, it's so obtainable. Um, it's so, again, far out of reach we won't have any motivation to actually go for it because we know we can't achieve it, right? So you gotta find that sweet spot, that stretch goal, that, you know, again, it's attainable, but, you know, you gotta take, you gotta put some serious commitment to actually achieve it, do you get what I mean? And this moves on to the R of the SMART, which is relevant. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, as we're talking about health and fitness, obviously these goals of mainly building muscle, losing fat, improving flexibility, mobility, or fixing back pain, right? Obviously we know, as we've established these goals, it's relevant, so this doesn't really need much touch upon. But the last point, which is very important, is time bound, right? Because without a deadline, there's no reason to act, you know what I mean? Maybe you've had it at work where you've had a project to complete over, let's say, six months. You don't really pay attention to it until, you know, the actual end, like, where you've only got a week or a day to complete, you know, a very big task, right? Because deadlines force us to take greater action, you know what I mean? And it forces us to actually do something about it to achieve the goal by the given time, right? So, as I said, with, like, all the steps that we've highlighted, right, with these goals, you don't just want to say, oh... I wanna lose 10 pounds of fat, or I wanna build 10 pounds of muscle, right? You wanna say something along the lines of, you know, if you're watching this at the start of January this year, you wanna say something like, by April the 1st, 2020, at 7 a.m., I will have lost 10 pounds of fat. You see the difference, especially if fat loss is your goal, how much the difference is of like just having that goal and actually having a deadline on it, right? It's a much bigger factor and ultimately with the latter I've mentioned, you're going to be much more motivated and determined to actually achieve that goal by giving yourself that form of accountability, you know what I mean? Because remember my friend, if let's say for the last you know year or two, several years let's say you've been struggling with your health and fitness, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten, right? So if you want to actually get a different type of result, you're going to have to actually change the type of actions you're going to have to take to get to that result, do you know what I mean? And so by applying up what I've uh, actually taught you and coached you through in this video, by actually taking action and implementing right what I've taught so you can actually finally take full control of your health and fitness, that way you can actually make 2020 your year where you finally get in the best shape of your life and build the body you've always wanted, which is pretty cool, right? And so with that said, if this video was of value to you and you would like more specific guidance and accountability to make sure that, you know, this year, 2020, is the year where you get in the best shape of your life and build the body you've always wanted, no matter what, right? Then of course you can, by all means, apply for a free coaching call with me, which I'll link up somewhere around here on the description below. It'll definitely be in the description below. Um, so again, once again, apply for a free coach call with me to see if we would be a great fit to work together. And um, if we are, I'd love to invite you to my 12-week online coaching program, The Body of Transformation Blueprint, where as long as you put in the work, I can assure you that over the next 12 weeks, you'll be astonished with you know the way your body looks, how you feel about yourself. So, you know, this time next year, you can actually be proud of what you see in the mirror rather than being like, oh man, you know, another year and I look the exact same. I don't want that to be happening to you, my friend. I want you to take full control of your health and fitness so you can transform your body for the rest of your life for good. You know what I'm saying? And just as a note, I do want to mention that right now as I'm recording this, I have a cap, no more than 20 clients at once because I dedicate my best time and attention to make sure every client gets the best results possible, right? In December, they were filling up faster every week and with January, booming right they're gonna fill up even faster my friends so again i wouldn't procrastinate because you know i can't guarantee when exactly but when i'm fully booked i will not be able to serve you unfortunately my friend and so i don't want to, i don't want that to be happening to you especially if it's something you seriously want to actually do so again act now my friend and uh we'll talk soon and uh i'd love to help you transform your body so that's it my friend if you enjoyed this video yeah like my content enjoy watching every single minute and every single second of this video make sure to give this video a cheeky thumbs up and comment down below what what am i doing what am i actually doing give this video a thumbs up and comment down below what part of this video um you found most helpful i'd love to know what your new year's goals are with your health and fitness for 2020 i'd love to know i'd love to interact with you on that note so you know with that said um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share it to a friend or friends you believe would benefit from these gains, and that's enough for me today. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your day, my friend, and as a crew member of the Gainsborough Express, keep moving forward. Happy New Year, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Happy New, uh, oh man, can't talk today. Happy New Year, my friend. I'll see you next time. <laughs>